We are now joined by number 15 UFC strawweight Mackenzie Dern. Mackenzie, thank you very much for joining us today. Hi, thank you for having me. <laughs> Our first question will go to Gabriel Gonzalez with Cape Side Press. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey, Mackenzie, how are you? Hi, I'm good. How are you? I'm doing very good. Thank you. Yeah. So you had said that before that the UFC, you know, you had reached a point where they were telling you, we'll call you and you wanted to go back to being more active where they were, you know, they're kind of looking for you to fight all the time. This is a nice turnaround. Would you say you are finally back to that point? Yeah, I mean, after my, my last fight with Hannah, you know, on the adrenaline after the fight, I said like, man, I'm ready to fight. Put me back as soon as possible. And then they called me like, hey, we have Randa Marcos for you in two weeks. I said like, and then after the adrenaline passed, you know, I said, oh man, two weeks is really, really soon. You know, I start to feel like kind of my hands sore from punching as hard as I could and some of the elbows she had got me with. So I said, oh no, Randa's a hard, a tough girl, you know, two weeks is kind of soon. Um, let's push, let's a little bit longer. And then they gave me like four, four months, you know, I said like, man, four months is a long time, you know? And then my manager said, no, I think it'll be better for you like to really train and evolve even more. And I mean, that's what managers are for, you know, to help keep keep uh, calm the athletes, you know, and make the best decisions. So now I couldn't be more happier with having like a full camp, um, prepare myself, evolve. I felt like I evolved so much in these in these four months, you know, but I started the camp eight weeks. So eight weeks training three times a day, like really hard, just so focused. And I'm really ready for this fight now. I know that you've made the jump a little bit. You're working a lot with the team at RVCA, Jason Perillo, Chito Vera, Vanessa Demopoulos. How have they helped to grow your game? Yeah, they helped me so much. I, I went to them halfway through the camp, you know, so four weeks, four weeks I'm with them. And just in the four weeks, everyone I met at the, at the Ruka gym, you know, they all noticed a big difference in the four weeks. And people that know me from, from my first UFC fight, they said, like, man, you look so much better. You look just like free. You look like you're so creative. You're so um, just starting to really show all your true potential. So the fact that I'm hearing this from like, you know, they're friends, you know, of course, but, you know, they, they'll tell the truth. You know, they're not like, you know, sugarcoating anything. You know, I think for sure they know they're fighters, too, you know, so no one wants to give like false, um, false, you know, false feelings. You know, they're really going to tell me the truth. So the fact that these people that are seeing me train every day, um, giving me like li new, new little details and new things to work on. Uh, Cheeto, you know, is kicking my butt all the time. It's, uh, it's so fun to see him doing like his crazy moves. And then I'm trying to do these crazy moves. It's like, man, this Jiu Jitsu girl's doing all these new styles and new things. It's, re it's really, really fun. So I'm really grateful for everything that they taught me in these four weeks. And I'm excited for the future that I have with them. And for sure, I mean, every, every academy I've been to, every coach I've been to, I've, I've, I take something with me um, and I'm grateful for them. So I'm just so glad to be kind of on this next phase of my career and really what, what the future holds for me with uh, Coach Perillo. You know, you're known for being one of the most decorated jiu-jitsu players in mixed martial arts, but <laughs> you've never gotten the submission of the year you had a great knee bar this year, but do you feel like you have competition? Your teammate Vanessa had the reverse triangle. Ariane Lipsky had a good knee bar. Do you feel like this could be your year where you get that award finally? Uh, definitely. <laughs> I definitely think so. You know, um, just for me, it was a surprise. My last submission, the leg lock was the first, you know, because, um, man, I, I, it's something so so common for us in jiu-jitsu so when they told me that that was the first in the world i said man okay let me let me go and look at all my submissions that i know to do in jiu-jitsu that are like so common for us because i'm gonna start letting them out this year you know for sure that's why i definitely want to fight again this year if everything goes good on this fight no injuries nothing like that um because i'm i'm coming i'm coming for that that award you know the submission of the year you know i just want people like i know they they respect me for sure because my jiu-jitsu background but i know for sure everyone says like oh but when you start throwing punches in there their black belt becomes a brown belt and then the brown belt becomes the purple belt you know so um definitely want people to keep that respect for my ground game and really show why the ufc saw so much potential in me my final question when you're so well known for jiu-jitsu obviously you know the first thing well work on your striking so you could be more dangerous how do you balance that? Because obviously you want to be better as a striker, but you still want your jujitsu to be so sharp because that's where you're the biggest threat. 
Yeah, it's it's a little hard, you know, because when I was competing, that always kept my jiu-jitsu sharp, you know. Comp there's nothing sharper than being competing at the, the highest level that there is. So since I've been out of the jiu-jitsu competitions, it's kind of a little bit hard to keep my jiu-jitsu so, um, so on point, you know, and everything, and just kind of keep evolving in jiu-jitsu. But I'm always, like, trying to be involved. My dad is always coming down to California and training with me, and there's nothing... There's nothing better than getting beat up by your by your dad. You know, it's what made me get my world titles was getting beat up by my dad every day on the on the academy. You know, when I was back in Arizona, so to have my dad back home and still and he's competing until today. So he's always coming with like some new new details and some new positions and kind of just how jujitsu is constantly evolving and people are always constantly coming up with defenses and new moves and all these things. He's constantly like reminding me and showing me new things. So. I love whenever he's in town with me and just whenever I get the chance to, if I'm not in the big gloves, you know, whenever I get the chance to do like sparring or training with the small gloves, I'm always like trying to do my ground game, attack the legs, attack the omoplatas, the crucifix, all the, all the omanari, all these types of things, you know, so that's what I love and I'm always just trying to keep, keep, keep at that, you know. Hey, thanks, Mackenzie. Good luck. Yeah, thank you. We'll go next to Pablo Santa Maria with Noti MMA Ecuador. Hi, Mackenzie. How are you? Hola, ¿cómo estás? <laughs> Hola. Uh, the first thing I want to ask you, as an Ecuadorian, uh, how is training with Chito? Uh, what did, did you learn something from him, or? Oh yeah, for sure. Chito is man. He's the guy. He's so he's so great. You know him, his family. He's pushing. I did so many like sparrings with him. Of course, like was more me trying to to touch him and and get him. You know, he has such good movement. But even like from in the gym. Work. He all the time is telling me like my body shots. He's telling me all these things to get better. Uh, and then of course, like starting to train with him, we say like, okay, let's go watch his fights when I get home. You know, then we start to watch his fights, and I'm seeing like now on the tr on the training, I'm doing like elbows like him, knees like him. So I'm really like have Chido as a good inspiration for me, and just to help push me. You know, I um I'll be at home and getting close to the camp and. Then I see like on Instagram, Chido's at the gym, you know, and I say like, man, Chido's at the gym. Okay, I need to be at the gym too because he's number 15 on the on the ranking too, you know, and and it helps like push to have another top fighter going after this after the same dream as you, um, and help push each other, you know. So if I see his training, I think like, yeah, okay, I need to be training too, you know, like okay, so let me go to the gym, get that. I see him running, okay, let me go run too, you know. Okay, he's doing this, I want to do that too, you know. So it <laughs> helps. Um, push me and, and try to be the best too. If I can be like the best, like the men's division, you know, then I think that, that I'll be the, the best in the women's division too. I get it. Uh, where do you think uh, Randa is more dangerous? Randa, I think she's the most danger on like her counter attacks on the stand up. Uh, I know she's a grappler, but um, I think it's different levels grappling. For sure, she's um, smart on the ground, but I definitely think because she's been in so many fights, she has like good to go all three rounds. She's fought like, um, she's like got in big fights, like where she's getting punched a lot and keep going forward. So I think she really like is good to know her distance and her reach. And I see her movement. She kind of like comes in, does some blitzes, comes out, uh, waits for the counter and, and comes back. So I think that's the most, most part that I, not that I need to be careful, but that I'll have the most difficulties, like to make sure I keep the pressure and not let her start to get her, her movement in the fight. Okay, uh, if you get the victory on Saturday, uh, you would like to face against Amanda Rivas to avenge your loss? Uh, I think I, I think eventually, yeah, I would like to face her, but not now. I think me and Amanda will definitely fight um, at the belt. You know, I think that we have so many, especially now that the corona, people are like fighting so so often. So. Some people are like winning, 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 then lose or lose, lose. And then when they have so much chance to like change the record really fast right now. And I think Amena has so much, um, all the potential to get the belt. And I think me too. So uh, I don't know what's what's uh, ahead of her, who she has for her, her next fights. I know definitely we both on the ranking. So um, our future fights are just getting harder and harder and harder. Um, so I don't know if I'll get to the belt before her or she'll get to, to the belt before me, but I definitely think that if we have the, the rematch, we'll be, uh, we'll be for, during the belt, you know, or, or by my, with me in the belt and she challenging me or her with the belt and me challenging her. Okay, I get it. And my last one is, what's your prediction for the fight? My prediction for the fight, I think that uh, I'm going to go in there and pressure her so much with the striking 
and uh, I think I'll hurt her on the striking, and maybe she'll knock down, and I'll get like a really amazing submission and get the fight bonus. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, Mackenzie. Good luck on Saturday. <laughs> thank you so much. Gracias. We'll go next to Jeffrey Harris with 411 uh, Mania MMA. Uh, good afternoon, Mackenzie. Thanks for joining us. Hi, thank you for having me. Um, so last year, you know, you experienced uh, the first loss of your MMA career. So what is the emotional state like when you have that first loss and then you're come back and you're, you know, you're able to win your next fight um, and sort of, you know, get that rush of emotion again? W what is it like, you know, going from, you know, the loss, the loss and, and being able to overcome that for your next fight and get a win? Yeah, first, like, definitely it sucks to have, like, that zero taken away from the record, you know? <laughs> it was so nice and pretty to have that zero there. Um, definitely, like, some things change. Uh, Sponsorship-wise, I think, like, kind of some opportunities change a little bit. But the fact, like, to be able to get back in, I don't know, I feel like I'm a totally different, different fighter, you know? Now I think I have got so much uh, momentum now in just my training, my mindset, everything is so so good and i'm just so much more focused than i ever was that um and i i'm hoping that everyone too that follows me that's kind of seeing that what's happening in my life they notice that too um it feels great to be able to like get that submission get come back on the win winning streak uh of course was just one you know so obviously this fight i'm trying to continue the winning streak and and now i'm in number 15 so that's where i was when i when i became pregnant so i'm kind of like Okay, I'm I'm back to where I left off of, and I'm even like ten times better. You know, I'm in better shape than when I fought uh, Amanda, in better shape than when I fought Hannah. I'm stronger, and I'm leaner. Uh, the weight's good, so it feels great. It really feels good to like just kind of be so light. And I think even though it sucks to have that that zero to take away the zero on my record, uh, it took a lot of pressure. You know, not that I felt pressure, but kind of took away all the expectations that I think so many people had. And now I feel like anything that I do, like any submission I'll do, any, I don't know, like knockout I get, anything, people are going to be like always surprised and like, man, what is she going to show me now? No, no, not like before it was very much like, um, uh, oh, well, yeah, she has the the train, you know, the, the, the hype train. Oh, and this and that, you know, so I feel like it took a lot of pressure off the shoulders. And now everything I do is like always to show and prove people and like surprise them and come up and just kind of be more free to become like the best athlete I can be. Uh, your opponent for this fight, Randa Marcos, uh, she's fought in the UFC uh, for almost six years. Um, you know, she's she's fought and beat a lot of big, na big names. She beat Angela Hill, who was uh, in the headlining fight uh, last week. But her record uh, in the UFC is, I think, six, seven, and one. Do you think it's more the opposition that she hasn't been able to be that consistent? Uh, or, or do you think she is maybe a little inconsistent as an, as a fighter? Uh, I'm sorry. What's opposition mean? I don't know that word. Like, do you think, do you think it's just, she's in there with, you know, such tough opposition, opposition that she's not able to get like a, a big win streak together yet? No, I think, I think Randa, she's such a tough fighter. Like she's been since the beginning, she's gone up the ranks, you know, I think, um, I think maybe she just accept, you know, She's down for the fight, you know, she accepted the fight. I think she fought maybe Amanda a little bit kind of uh, not last minute, but kind of because Paige got hurt, you know. So I know that she will take any fight, you know, from what I from what I heard when they offered the fight for me with two weeks after my last fight, she was good to go. Um, I was once like, no, no, I want some more time, you know. So I think she just like is really good at and uh, she feels good to fight. She's comfortable. She's not scared of anything. So it's good to have that as a fighter, you know, but I think. If you want to think about your rec, you know, all these things make a difference, you know, to pick good fights, to pick good timing, to have a good training camp. Um, it's great to be able to put on a great fight, but in the end, to get, you know, to where you want to be the, the belt, you know, you need to put in all the work and and no one cares, you know, like if you have two weeks to fight, if you are pregnant, we're pregnant or anything, you know, if you're there to fight, uh, then that will be on your record. So it's hard to to have like a winning, lose, winning, lose and expect like to be to the to the belt but i think she had she has all the potential she had all the pen, potential in the beginning too she went on the ring to get to the belt you know she's a tough girl she's dangerous in a lot of different areas she's experienced but um i think just 
the fact that she loves to fight so much and she's there and everything can make sometimes make the timing that she picks fights and maybe not so good. And also too, I think she's kind of like you said, she's been in it, in there for a long time. Um, she's maybe I think 36 or 37. So I don't know how how much um, you know desire she has for like you know drive she still has in it uh, to get keep getting you know punched in the face and you know weight cuts and all those things. So I think maybe that that might be taking a little bit feeling you know just to be so consistent consistent and you know have to keep pushing through it all the time but she's definitely dangerous and i know she's she's gonna be a good test for me for sure uh, on paper i think this is a fun action packed i think it's a competitive fight i think it's gonna be a fun matchup but what do you think i agree with you i think it's gonna be that's why i'm so that's why i trained so hard for this fight you know this is the most i ever trained for uh a fight you know i i really took this fight so serious i always try to take my fight serious you know but i think my like my focus before I was pregnant, you know, I had my missed weights. Um, I had like, a, you know, after I finished the fight, I go to vacation. Um, and this, no, it's like kind of, and also with the Corona, you know, everything was closed. So kind of helped me just to came back after Hannah, just went back to the gym and I said, okay, Randa Marcos, that's the girl. Vegas, everything set from the beginning, very like organized. I trained like so hard for this because I know she's going to like, I think if I'm her, I'm going to try to go the three rounds. I see that she goes three rounds a lot. She has a lot of heart. So, and now that I'm at this whole ne new level uh, of a fighter, you know, I'm definitely not, not shy, shying away from the fight. So I'm going to definitely put pressure for it. And I think she'll put pressure for it too. So I think the fans are going to be really liking this fight. And uh, it's great to be on the card, you know, Tyrone Woodley, Colby Covington, you know, it's going to be a lot of great fights. So we have a lot of, um, high high standards to to show the girls like on this on this card uh thank you mackenzie and good luck on your matchup thank you so much all right thank you very much mackenzie uh, you're all set thank you